Hello everyone, this is Lam. Welcome to my channel. Here is a video tutorial of a painting that I did a few nights ago using the cupping technique that I developed and also the white over color approach that I was experimenting. And if you have seen my last video, I did a video on the white over color with the cupping. But this time I now was going to add string poles to it and I didn't know how it's going to play out you can, it's really hard to plan out an acrylic pour so I'm just winging it so here I am layering my cup I did it again from purple to red to gold to white and then some more gold and then green and blue just follow the color wheel this way, I can ensure that the complementary colors never touch each other because otherwise they'll make mud and I don't like mud in my painting. I usually like my colors to be bright and clear and vibrant. I am also a big fan of metallic colors, so I always use some kind of metallic paint in my paintings and in this case, I layer one shade of flat paint and one shade of metallic together so that the flat paint is usually opaque and the metallic is usually semi-opaque so that will give some some illusion of depth because you can see kind of a layering okay here i did the flip cup and nothing fancy just flip it and torch it a little bit pop the bubbles then tilt it a little because I don't want the paint to be too thick but I don't want it to cover the canvas just yet because I'm going to put the white on top of it now here I layer the white now someone told me that she tried this approach and her white paint was just falling into the colors and I think it has something to do with the thickness of the white paint I use um, Hobby Lobby's Fine Touch Titanium White. That is a pretty thick paint, and I don't, I don't thin it out too much. It's pourable, but it is not thin. So I think that makes a difference. So here I just pour around the outside of the puddle and then I cover up some more the edges of the puddle and I'm not trying to cover everything I leave some streaks of colors showing because I think that adds interest and then I tilt it out to cover the canvas so here the canvas is almost all covered and I am beginning to see some lines forming and it looks like a border to me and it kind of reminds me of some of those Art Nouveau paintings or pictures the borders that I have seen and I love Art Nouveau I just love that style and so I was thinking hmm can I achieve something like that something of that vibe with cupping so that's what i started doing and i just randomly putting my cup down letting it swirl and drag and pull up the colors from underneath and then i started dragging with the rim and making lines with this method it makes the, uh, some really nice curved lines and I really like that so, so far it turns out the colors are very pretty and I am making you know just small adjustments here and there and those big round leaves I was thinking about making them pointy 
but I decided not to just leave them like a mushroom shape. Well, this one I did make it pointy, but the other ones, I ended up leaving them just round like they are because I don't want to mess up the colors. Because anytime you manipulate the paint, you just, you know, change the color distribution and the, and the formation. And sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's not. So in this case, since the colors are already so pretty, I just decided to leave them. And then I, I am just adding some little curves, little vines here and there not planning a particular you know, picture in mind but with a general idea that I want the cluster of colors to be like on the side so it looks kind of like uh, the border of a stationary set if you know what I mean and I think it's kind of pretty. Okay, so here I am just fixing small things, adding little details. And I wish I could fast forward this part. I don't know how to do it with iMovie. I am doing it in double time now, but still looks really slow. And this is a really slow process to me. And for this particular painting, I spent so much time just doing the little details. And that is boring to watch, but it is actually the fun part when making the picture because I like to micromanage things. So at this point, I feel that I am done with the border. There's nothing much I wanted to add without messing things up. And it is complicated enough. So I want to move on to the string pole. Now, early that day, I saw a wonderful picture on Instagram of a string pole painting of a butterfly. And it was amazing. So I wanted to try that. What if I string pole some butterflies on this picture? So I'm just, you know, marking out the shape of the butterfly that I wanted with my bamboo stick. And I have no idea how it's going to turn out. I've never done a string pole on a white on color before. So this is an experiment. Now, and as you can see, it's also quite messy. Okay, pole. Yes, it's showing some color. But it is also pulling up a lot of paint. Now, one thing about this is that when we run up the paint with the string, that puddle of the paint that is pulled out of the way by the string becomes, you know, becomes thick and sometimes hard to manage. So here I am trying to pull the lower part of the butterfly ring, uh, wings. Sorry, I did. I couldn't get a close up, but it was kind of messy. I had to wipe up some of the excess paint that it pulled up, and then I kind of fix it a little bit with the bamboo stick. And not quite to my liking, but I was just going to keep doing it and see how it turns out so I so here I am doing the right wing the top part putting my string down and I was hoping that the color would be more vibrant 
like the cupping that I did, the color turned out very vibrant. But with the string pole, I guess because the uh, the color underneath has, was mixing with the white, so it did not come out very deep. It's kind of like a light color. And here I am wiping more, I'm wiping up more paint. And I decided that not too, not enough color showing, so I did another pull. Yeah, it's, this time is much better, but still that paint was all over, so I had to fix it somehow I decided to just keep doing it and at this time I try to wipe off the paint first before I pull to see if that is any better yeah it is better So all of this is try and error. There is so much that we can experiment in fruit art. So here I decide to repull that wing again. Try to make the color, try to reveal the, uh, the color more from underneath. I know there's a lot of color down there under the white. Now here is better. And then I like to dip it with a finger or something. You know, from here and there to just fix a few things. You know, our hands are our best tools and our fingers. This wing, I think it was a little bit too small, so I expanded it a little bit. Okay, now that is that butterfly has a better shape because we want it to be balanced. We don't want one side to be bigger than another significantly. So here it is, one butterfly down, and I wanted to do a few more, otherwise it's too lonely. So here I am doing more butterflies. So the next butterfly I want to make it sideways because I don't want all the butterflies to be flat like the first one. I want them to have to fly in different orientation, different positions to add varieties and interest. But it's giving me problem in getting the angle right. Now, believe it or not, this is actually double time. See here, I am using a pair of tweezers to help me pull. And it is a slow process. See, this is double time, but it still looks like not moving too fast. And you can imagine how slowly I was working. When I finished recording, I looked at the whole thing. It took 30 minutes. And only 10 minutes of it was making the border the, uh, with the cupping technique. And then 20 minutes of it was making butterflies. And that is how slow it goes. And it is a delicate process. 
is more work with not as much to show for it. But then it it is a, all about details. And what I feel is that with any kind of string pole or chain pole, it is probably easier to do it in a large scale and it may be harder doing it small like this. But then, well, that's what I usually do. I like to work with the small details. I like my paintings to have a lot of details, a lot going on. And that's one of the reasons I am so drawn to fruit art. Because it has natural details built into it. See, anytime we do a pour, it, no, it doesn't take much to get a lot of intricacy. Like the cupping border that I just did, all that, mm, all the intricate lines and leaves and vines, if I were to paint them with a brush, it would take me forever and it would not come out half as nice. But with fruit art, it's, yeah, it's relatively easy. And there's so much detail that uh, that is produced by fruit arts that you cannot replicate with any other technique. That's why I love it so much. Now here is another butterfly. I'm doing a flat one again. I'm still fixing this one, but I was already thinking about the placement of the next one. Because I was thinking about stopping at 3, but then, see this video, it cuts off the top, but there is a little bit more of the canvas on the top, so there is an empty space above which is not bad, but not good either. I don't want to have, you know, too much of an empty space. I want to, I don't want to stuff it with uh, with things, but you know, it just doesn't feel very balanced if it's so heavily uh, colored at the bottom and not as much at the top. So I decided to add one more or maybe two butterflies. So I decided to do one over there. So with this fourth butterfly, I thought I was good. starting to get a hang of it. It was going to go smoothly. Well, not so much. For some reason, it was not giving me much colors at all. And also, there is this well, this side is going a little better. But mainly, it was not turning out exactly the shape I wanted it. So I had to do a lot of fixing. I actually used my pinky to move some white paint around so that it would look more like a butterfly shape instead of just a blob. And that happens 
because there is this unpre unpredictability of the pain. So you just cannot control all the details. But there are ways to fix little things and hopefully we don't mess it up. It just takes you know, very delicate touch, light hands. So here I'm fixing the borders a little bit, the edges. I wish I could show a close up of this because I was actually adding to the wing of that one to make the wing bigger. We can fix a lot of the little details like that with a bamboo stick or with our little fingers. Yeah, so those, well, I have pretty small hands because I am a pretty short person. So I do a lot of the details with my fingers. But for those who have like for guys who have bigger hands, then sorry, you have to use a bamboo stick or something pointy. So here, I kind of thinking about adding another butterfly there. I didn't have to, but I was thinking, hmm, I have three flat butterflies and one on the side, I want to do another one sideways just to balance it out so that the, the only one on the side wouldn't feel so lonely. So, so that's what I was doing. Again, a lot of fixing details. And I even use my cup to add some color because this one is really pale. So I am adding some color to it and then covering it with the white so that when I do the string pull, I can pull up some color. But it wouldn't be too bright because I don't want it to be much brighter than the other butterflies then it will look out of place. So it still didn't look like it was going too well. Fixing it with paper towel with my finger Pulling every trick on my book, moving paint around with my finger to make it look like a butterfly. At this point, I pretty much was just letting go. I was not trying to get it perfect. I just wanted to, want it to look like some semblance of an insect. Yes, I decided that was it. I put in enough time and it's as good as I can make it. So here it is. The end result of this Art Nouveau painting with butterflies. And I hope you like it. And here is the dry result at the end. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And stay tuned for the next tutorial. See you.